Welcome to this worship service. My name is Pam Batson and I'm one of the chaplains with Wesley Mission Queensland. I've asked Rob Edwards, one of our other chaplains, to assist me in leading this worship service. Today we continue our Lenten journey as we share in Lent 5 service of worship. Today our call to worship is responsive. You are invited to respond with the words in yellow type. Break open our hearts today to hear your word, O God. Let our fears be that vanquished and our spirits restored. Come, let us worship with great joy. Let us drop the things of the past which weighed us down. God is about to do something new in our lives. Let God's will become strong in our lives. Amen. Could we stand, if you're able, and sing together our first hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Let's continue our service today with our prayer of invocation. As we come to worship, O God, we pray that your spirit will be our strength, your word will be our guide, and your love will be our comfort, and your promise will be our hope. We gather now to praise you, O God, in the name of Christ our Lord, and to bring our prayer of confession. Almighty and merciful God, who created us for life together. 
we confess that we have turned from your way. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved one another as you commanded. We have been quick to claim our own rights, but careless of the rights of others. We have taken much and given little. Holy God, whose compassion never ends, we ask you to forgive us our sins and to blot out our guilt, that we may know again the joy of your spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned. Therefore, because of this, I can declare to you, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let's sing together, now thank we all our God. Our reading today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he, had, uh, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and he kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. 
You, all, you will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In today's gospel reading, Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Jerusalem. Because of Jesus' previous actions of healing people, raising Lazarus from the dead, and challenging the authorities who wanted to get rid of Jesus, Jesus and his disciples were, re were re-entering hostile territory. On their way to Jerusalem, they stopped off to see their friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, who lived in Bethany, which is just outside of Jerusalem. Even with all the un this unre unrest, this plotting to kill Jesus, Jesus' friends decided to have a dinner party for him. I suspect that this dinner party was to honour and to thank Jesus for raising Lazarus from the dead. Martha, as usual, did the food preparation. Na Lazarus sat at the table with Jesus, while Mary disappeared somewhere. On her return, she knelt at Jesus' feet and began to anoint them with some very expensive perfume nard. Then Mary undid her hair and began to wipe Jesus' feet with it. This certainly wasn't appropriate behaviour. After all, a woman only let her hair down for her husband or if she was a woman of ill repute. And here is Mary, letting her hair down in front of everyone and wiping Jesus' feet with her hair. If you were there, I wonder how you would have reacted. I wonder why Jesus didn't try to stop her. After all, Jesus was always focusing a lot of his attention on the care of the poor and the disadvantaged. Yet, as I reflected on this scene, I wondered what Mary might have been saying to Jesus through her actions. It's my belief that Mary was sensing that what Jesus had been saying about his betrayal and death was near. And so she chose to anoint Jesus' feet with the expensive perfume and to wipe them with her hair as a way of saying to Jesus, I hear what you are saying. I am doing this as a way of expressing my love and care of you. I think that that moment must have been an extremely powerful moment for both Jesus and Mary. The touch and expression of love. The intimacy of that moment was broken when Judas Iscariot interjected and said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? Jesus affirmed Mary's action and challenged Judas's response by saying to, her, to him, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor but you will not always have me. In responding to Judas the way he did, Jesus is also saying to Mary, thank you for hearing what I have been saying and thank you for showing your love, care and compassion for me. Jesus saw the action of Mary as a preparation for his upcoming death and burial. He saw what Mary did as a loving devotion to him. In many ways, Mary and Ju Judas's action and response portray people's response to the call to follow Jesus and to be his disciple. Judas mouthed the words of being the disciple of Jesus, but he could see that the road of discipleship was becoming too costly and he was not willing to follow that road to the conclusion. Whereas Mary's willingness to be a true disciple of Jesus 
was expressed through her extravagant gift, which was costly. But she was also prepared to give all, the, all she had, including her reputation, to express her love and devotion to Jesus. I wonder what you, what am I, prepared to do or give to express our love, devotion and discipleship for Jesus. Amen. Let's continue today with our prayers of the people. Let's pray. Loving and caring God, we pray for all people in their daily life and work. We pray for our families, our friends and other residents. Maybe we be aware of your presence in our daily life. We pray for this community, for this country and our world. We think of those who do not have adequate food, fresh water, shelter, medical or educational opportunities. We pray for those who are live with injustice and oppression, those who are sick, lonely or grieved. May their needs be met through the love, care and generosity of others. We pray that we might be like Mary and be willing to show others through our words and our actions, our love of you and our care of others. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Could we continue today with the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing together. Take my life and let it be.
mission. Go into this coming week showing your love and devotion to Jesus Christ through your words and your actions. And our blessing. May the grace of God surround you, the love of Jesus Christ strengthen you, and the power of the Holy Spirit sustain you, now and always. Amen.